Airbase is Perch, and uh, and I'm here talking with Joe. How are you doing? I'm all right, Perch. How are you? I'm, I'm doing well. I'm, I'm reading the, some good comics from the past. Oh, good. No, that, yeah. that's great news. Yeah, so you recommended that we look at this one, and I, I remembered reading this a long time ago, um, and I, I honestly, I don't think I've read this in a good 15 years, but it's, uh, yeah. it's a great comic. Mm -hmm. So this is uh, Action Comics number 554. This would have been in the early 80s, 1984. Yes, yeah, this is, uh, so we're still pre-crisis, uh, yeah. and uh, yeah, it's, uh, if Superman didn't exist, someone would have to create him. Yes. It's a it's a it's a great hook, and um, this is mostly a one and done. But it does build from the previous storyline that was going on at the time with uh, Superman caught in the time stream, basically. Yeah, there was uh, basically uh, for a few or so issues before this. Um, I think around like five fifty, five forty nine in that area that you, or maybe it was five fifty one. But either way, they they're. Uh, uh, trying to stop Vandal Savage. There's these pyramids that um, he's been, uh, you know, trying to like activate. It's a, this whole plan, and mm -hmm. uh, you know, he's uh, Superman's working with uh, a bunch of uh, uh, lesser known characters, like um, you know, Cave Carson, a cybernetic mm -hmm. guy, and, and some other characters like that. Uh, and, and then it all culminates to Superman. Uh, stopping that, but getting caught in this time stream, which leads us to this story. Yes, it's it's it can be read by itself. Um, they do recap in one page, kind of this previous storyline, so it all fits together. If you didn't, if you didn't read it, but this yeah. this comic is uh, Marv Wolfman and Gil Kane. Yes, and in this case, Gil Kane. Um, I, I, one of the complaints is that uh, we don't have inkers anymore. But this book, Gil Kane was doing the penciling and inking all in one himself. Yeah. And it's great. Uh, Gil Kane is uh, one of the best we ever got. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, this is a, a really a uh, lot of work, a lot of love. This it does not look cheap uh, in terms of, of the, the effort. And uh, yeah, Gil Kane's doing a, a, a great, great piece of work. And Marv Wolfman, um, a lot of uh, narration in this yeah. book. And, and so I wanted to kind of, I, I asked you just right before we, we started recording here, um, why you, you went to this, but I, in reading this, it feels like a def, an Alan Moore take to me before there was Alan Moore. Yeah. And, and that, that kind of, you had the same answer or a similar answer. Yeah. Um, that this is like an Alan Moore take on, on Superman before we got, you know, like whatever happened to the man tomorrow. And, and this is kind of like two sides of that same coin. Uh, mm -hmm. instead of being this sort of like celebration, um, you know, this like sad thing, it's sort of like the end of, of, of Superman, but also highlights everything that makes Superman great. This is a story that's like almost the exact opposite of the, it's somehow the beginning of Superman and also yeah. why, why Superman is important and, and we need Superman. <laughs> Our comic opens with his Alien Armada, uh, which is, again, Gil Kane not skimping at all on the illustration. No. <laughs> tons of, of ships. Um, kind of moving in on the Earth and this idea that they're, uh, you know, they, they found the Earth. It's devoid of resistance. The uh, It's also devoid of any kind of violence and the heroic concept. It's, it's basically a peaceful planet, but a docile planet. Yeah, it's so so it's a lot of still like, you know, farming, hunter gathering kind of world, uh, even in like the, you know, contemporary time, because this is supposed to be a contemporary story. Uh, it's just that, you know, things haven't evolved. There's no real innovation. There's no push for innovation. Uh, so uh, the world is basically thousands and thousands of years behind where it should be. Yeah. And it's it's because you know we learned that these pyramids, which which had been referenced in the previous comics uh, leading up to this, um, that these pyramids have kind of uh, eradicated the the spark of imagination that yeah. that make these these planets uh, easy to defeat, easy to take over. So the ships uh, move in a lot of them, um, and they they list as the unconquered Zandarian Armada. 
uh, this, yeah. this army. Um, and they come in, they just start blowing the shit out of everything. Yeah, there's a pretty uh, horrifying scene where um, the, these two boys, uh, you know, Joey and Jerry, uh, you know, will, yes, <laughs> if, if you're if you're thinking that, you, you might be right there. But um, they're they're hanging out, and uh, these other kids are going for a swim, and they basically dive into the water and are immediately uh, shot with a giant laser from a ship. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Uh, lots of uh, lots of death. Uh, going on here is these these characters not not killing they they make it very clear they're not uh, killing everyone because they still need basically slave labor when yeah. this this plan is taken over but the armada comes in no resistance whatsoever um, kids boiled alive in, <laughs> in water <laughs> basically yeah uh, uh, but these two uh, Jerry and Joey uh, they say they're always making up dumb stories that they they're and their stories are important to them, but nobody's really taking these stories seriously. They're, they're kind of the only two kids with any imagination and maybe the only two people on the world with imagination. They're, they're kind of saying. Yeah. And uh, there's a lot of interesting messages going on here in, in the narration. This is on uh, page eight. Mm -hmm. You know, you get to a point where it's, uh, you know, a world without war, a utopia, you'd think, but without war, mankind would never have grow grouped together in cities for mutual protection, without the need for cities, none were built, uh, you know, and it goes on and on from there. But um, it's it's an interesting take, this this idea um, that you, you probably wouldn't see thrown around today, uh, <laughs> which, um, yeah, it's really interesting because it's this idea of, you know, innovation through conflict, which uh, is a fact. True. And yeah. um, it's not like w whether we like it or not. Yeah, that that's that's a, a reality. Um, we could potentially change that in the future. But as it stands now, conflict has really created uh, many innovations that we enjoy in day to day life. Yeah. And it, which is what they I mean, they basically because of the lack of conflict, uh, no factories, uh, no medicines because there was not a need. Uh, trade never flourished. Only farmland. That's all you needed was farmland. So farmland thrived. People never left the land of their birth. Um, so as a result, you know they're easily taken over. Um, and even these two boys, they get back to the village and they're like, "Where's Where's mom and dad? Has anybody seen them?" And yeah, I like the nonchalant old guy. That yeah, are probably dead, buried under rubble. <laughs> Breaking that. Yeah, news. yeah. <laughs> no, for sure. I, I didn't realize you were in this comic. Yeah. Oh, thanks. Yeah. <laughs> you know, that's yeah. seems like a very perch line. Oh, probably dead. Yeah, come probably. on, dinner. Yeah. Go. Yeah. Let's get some food. Yeah. Yeah. Come on. Let's drink. Uh, I'm, I'm buying. Well, you're you're right there. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> he's not holding a drink, so I guess it's it's only partially on on brand. But um, well, there's one arms off panel. So that's true. He there could be there could be a, a flask of whiskey there. Um, yeah. Well, anyway, these kids are trying to rally the troops, basically saying, you know, we can't let them destroy everything we own. We uh, we're strong. We can do it if we band together. And even these the the villagers uh, who are they've never experienced conflicts. They're also perfectly content to just roll over here. Basically, they're like, ah, they're they're making up stupid stories. Just accept your death, kids. Yeah, and uh, it's interesting, but but. You know, Marv Wolfman sets it up in an interesting way here because it's like they don't have innovation. They don't they don't have motivation. It's been like bred out of them through uh, the events that happened with the pyramids and all that. So. So, yeah, it, it you understand it where they're like, ah, oh, what are you going to do? We can't think of anything to do. We're just going to be drones and just continue just living our lives and doing what we have to do to survive. Mm hmm. It's. The, the they they kind of come back up to the ship. These kids, you know, run off to try and formulate their plan. They believe that they are the only ones who could hold kind of the key to survival here. And uh, meanwhile, the aliens and this is you, you under, come to understand why. But the aliens are like, unless we can find these last two resistors, these these two resistance, we cannot conquer the planet. So it's a, you're seeing this gigantic armada aliens and weaponry and just clearly the ability to destroy whatever they want, but they're concerned over only two individuals and they've got to find them. 
um, which reinforces kind of the the power of, of any anyone can make a difference. But yeah, absolutely. So the kids um, go back to Kate, and it it is it's very metaphorical. The kids decide to uh, to start drawing on the cave walls. Yeah, and and, and this is this is uh, a sweet moment here. This is. Uh... It's not the sweetest moment because because by the end of the issue, you know, kind of gets you a little bit. But it is, yeah. it, but um, but this part, this is where it starts getting like really sweet, you, you know, because um, we we get the whole bit where um, you know, Joe, you know, Joey's drawn and it's uh, you know, like how do we make him fly? You know, uh, uh, wings wings would look stupid. I know, put a cape on him to catch the wind and give him special boots so he can run really fast and make him big and give him a symbol. So people yeah. know he's better than a man. He's a Superman. And like, it's, it's adorable. It's like two kids uh, representing a writer and an artist, you could say. Yes. Yeah. You could say that. And, uh, and they, so the, this, this team of creators creates this uh, image of Superman on the wall. I do laugh that, that, uh, you know, the kids drawing with rocks and uh, they get this kind of outline of the Superman. And then the next shot, it's a fully colored and shaded Superman. I do. I do like yes. how, <laughs> the uh the the colorist for this how it happened off panel like uh yeah i do wonder if if that was a, a mistake if, if Gil a mistake or, or very very clever <laughs> no, no I, I i can't tell but yeah that kid does some mean cross hatching with those rocks he absolutely does yeah so he, they basically recreate their superman and on the ship, they realize that the heroic concept uh, exists and mythic belief is returning and the energy levels of their pyramids are, are decreasing. And, and that uh, if they if the belief in heroes continues to strengthen, the world will return to its previous reality, basically. Yeah. Um, so, you know, they, the aliens are really pissed off now. It's like you you better get these two that are growing up drawing, drawing cave drawings and we want you to turn them over to us or you will meet a horrible death and just, uh, you know, they're, they're, they're frantic now. Um, and the kids correctly determine that uh, what, they, what they want is a heroic concept. They want the Superman. They're scared of the Superman. Yeah. And uh, he said, but he's only a drawing I made. He can't hurt them. He says, don't you see? He's more than a drawing. He's an idea. They're yeah. scared of the idea of a Superman. And that's... That's some good stuff. So, yeah, that's great. And then um, the kids, before they run back there, uh, make their own Superman costumes. Sure. Uh, which, which again, it's like it's adorable. It's like it don't, yeah. don't don't think too hard on that. It's just cute. Yeah. Um, <laughs> exactly. You know. Well, for all we know, they were gone for like a week. We don't really know, but <laughs> yeah, it, it, but yeah. It, it completely fits. Yeah, it's like uh, uh, so they show up in their their homemade Superman costumes, they kind of inspire the villagers. Um, I mean, there's this old guy who uh, who's kind of coming along, and I like this, uh, you know, I don't want our town destroyed. I don't think anyone else does. Maybe these kids are right. Um, and they kind of muzzle this guy. He, 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 put, he just shoves this other guy aside. It's it's a, it's a one of the more, it's, it's a slight awkward moment in this comic. Um, but anyway, uh, you've got to believe in the Superman. They said, you've got to believe he exists and the aliens kind of almost James Bond style, uh, fire this, this earth cutting ray into the ground. that slowly is inching closer and closer to, uh, everybody. Uh, but they rally the power of belief and from that belief yeah. comes Superman. Yeah. Um, so he he emerges and is is made real through the belief of these creators, um, and he immediately you know springs into action and uh, you know flies into space and and takes on the armada uh, on their own and, and kind of inspires the people. See people somehow I don't know how exactly these people on the ground are able to see Superman in deep space uh, beating up the armada, but that's okay. They they they're able to see every. Yeah moment of this battle um and superman easily is able to uh to, to kind of cry you know stop the armada crash into the ship superman's wondering you know how many cities have been leveled how many people were killed what type of creature could be so so cold-blooded and we see our aliens for the first time what, what did you think yeah 
I, I mean, th this is all really great stuff. And, and, and again, at this point in the comic, you you have the John Williams Superman theme going through your head. Oh, of course. You know, like this is the uh, this is it's very uh, just just wholesome, just like Superman. He's beating this armada, and, and then we get the uh, the aliens just to find out that they are, uh, you know, they're just wusses. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. They're kind of tiny little squid bird green creatures that are. And they they're in they instantly cave. <laughs> like, yeah. Well, and and that that it's feeding into that idea of you know like bullies uh, when confronted by something more powerful immediately cave. Like it's yeah. that. I, I mean, this is a more extreme example of they are basically incapable of violence because they're just right. so weak as a species. And uh, yeah, it instantly cave or like you know we'll do whatever you want. We'll we'll free everyone. Just please don't hurt us. Kind of kind of thing. Yeah. So basically, the kids that were that we thought were boiled alive in the lake, they were just uh, teleported into a holding bay, yeah. and and uh, they they you know they would have been returned. They say so. Uh, Superman, uh, you know, basically, um, as as you know, belief has come back to the planet. The timeline has been restored. We see skyscrapers jut proudly into a warm golden dawn. The farmlands fade, and and our our correct timeline is assured. I do like a sly smile twists upon Superman's handsome face. Um, I, I love the artwork in this, but uh, that is one creepy as hell look. <laughs> Superman. No, it, it is. It's, it might be a little over inked. That might be what's doing it, but um, yeah. it's yeah. over rendered around the face, but, um, but no, uh, no shade to Gilkane. He's a, he's a legend and does great yeah. work. That is a, that is a funny moment. Yeah, it, it is. Or, or the eyes could have been more prominent. I think the eyes looking almost blacked out is part of what's making that creepy. But um, but yeah, then you get to the bit, um, you know, a couple of panels from there where this is from here to the end is, is where, you know, you should, you should get a little misty eyed, you should get a little emotional, you should put the book down shortly after this where, um, you know, the guy's telling the the two kids, you know, sometimes just living is so hard. There are so many problems that your trolls get the best of you. After a while, you find you can't believe in anything ever being good, but you too believed. You too had the imagination, the sense of wonder to think beyond what they wanted you to think. And it's yeah. like, this is th this whole bit, like everything at the end here, it's just, it's beautiful. Yeah, no, it's 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 optimism. It's believing in heroes. It's uh, it's it's the core of what Superman is. A yes. character that people can't quite figure out how to write. There's no good stories for Superman. Um, maybe they just need to believe. Uh, it's it's a it's a good moment here where you know the kids, uh, you know, Superman flies off. Time to return home. Um, you know, Superman. This job for Superman is over. He knows another will soon come his way. But meanwhile, then the last, our final little kind of tease here is um, a slightly older uh, Jack and Joe. And they are basically uh, kind of sitting in an apartment uh, or a building somewhere, a small house, sorry, in suburban metropolis, uh, coming, trying to come up with a good new idea for a comic. And uh, they're, you know, they... They suddenly kind of get their idea. He's going to be great. Listen, here's what we do. It's going to be our greatest idea ever. And you, I mean, clearly these are, these kids are intended to be Jerry and Joe. Yeah. Jerry, Jerry Siegel and Joe Schuster. Yeah. Which is a, but that's a, that's a, a very meta, but it's a wonderful little moment. Don't you think? Yeah. Oh my God. It's, it's very, it's very sweet. And then dedicated to Jerry Siegel and Joe Schuster, whose imagination led generations to even more imaginings with deep respect from Julie Marvin Gill. Yeah. It, it's a, it's a classic issue. It's a, it's a great issue. It, it is like, uh, like you mentioned, it, it is like the man, uh, you know, whatever happened to the man of tomorrow. It does have an Alan Moore feel to it, just yeah. in kind of the power of belief and, and some of these other elements, some comic, you know, creators being kind of written into the comic uh, that they're in to to kind of make a commentary on how these heroes are created. But it's a it's a it's a wonderful little Superman book. Is this we we've done these videos on 
kind of the one and done single issues that really encapsulate a character. In in this case, it's more about the belief and power around Superman as opposed to Superman the character. But wh where does this sit with you in terms of being kind of this iconic Superman book? Yeah, I, I think I honestly think this is up there with you know whether it happened to the man tomorrow for the man who has everything kind of stories that this is uh it, it's something i feel like you know every superman fan should read this if you haven't already and uh it is available in a couple of places i mean you know it's on comicsology you can get the back issue like this, this back issue doesn't go for that much you could uh you could find it pretty pretty easily uh it's in the adventures of superman by gil kane hardcover which is out of print but it's not super out of print uh, I still see this uh, sitting in some comic shops you might be able to pick up. And it's also in um, the Action Comics 80th Anniversary hardcover. Yeah. And and like you mentioned, um, you can get this comic for, I mean, I'm, I'm looking at eBay right now, and you can, you can get this comic for four bucks. Yeah. So cheap. A lot of comic shops probably have this. Um, you, could, you could come across it. But it's a good one for your collection because it really is one of those iconic, stories of character it is superman it is kind of the nature of the character and it's a it's a they like said it's a one and done story and it's a it's a good one why wouldn't it be a smart idea at some point if dc just created a, a trade paperback of you know the flash story we reviewed the super the, the wonder woman the superman you could you could put one character uh, or sorry one comic from each of the main characters into one trade and sell it yeah. as kind of this uh like that would be a smart thing to do. That that would be smart. Um, having a Superman by Marv Wolfman collection mm, would also sure. be really smart. Um, everything he was writing before this, because he had like an, a run on Action Comics. Uh, you know, going back to God, it would have been like in the five thirties, I want to say, because there's the whole thing about the splitting Superman in two and keeping one in the past. Then he uh, he's the one with Gil Kane who came up with the Brainiac that I think more people uh, mm -hmm. yep. are familiar with the more robot Brainiac with the flying giant head uh, yep. spaceship uh, that's from this run. So I, I don't know why they would have a collect. You could probably do an omnibus of Marv Wolfman's Superman uh, stories, just you things think. like that. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's a great issue. Uh, it, you should you should check it out if you haven't read it. Action Comics five fifty four from the early eighties from nineteen eighty four. Um, yeah, go get this. And and Joe, thank you very much for reliving this comic with. Uh, I, again, I haven't read this in fifteen years. It was really enjoyable. Yeah, no problem. I, I was happy to read it again too.